Hey everybody, Jason here from geoffadesigns.com. Uh, today I'm going to be going through a tutorial about uh, performing an Artnet merge. Um, I'm going to be going through a couple of uh, different systems for performing this. Uh, the basics for both of them are going to be the same. Um, so basically what we're trying to accomplish is you're most often uh, at a festival uh, you have a guest LD coming and bringing in a different console system let's say they're bringing a hog or an AVO or a Vista and you need to get them patched into your MA networked rig so let's say you're using a bunch of NSPs um, obviously thing equipment that they can't uh, connect to directly so they're gonna send you artnet and your console is going to convert that artnet into MA net and spit it out to the rig the same way that's been working uh, all day so to perform this the first thing we're gonna make sure uh, the first thing we're gonna check on is our uh, network uh, settings so uh, very first thing for me right now uh, just make sure that you're in session uh, if you're using, in my case, I'm using on PC right now, uh, which means that my main IP is also going to be my Artnet IP. If you're running uh, an actual console, which is more likely the case when you're going to need an Artnet merge, um, this number isn't going to matter very much to you. What you're looking for is EtherCon 2. So EtherCon 1, if you don't know, is what runs uh, everything on the MA except Artnet. Uh, EtherCon 2 is reserved specifically for Artnet, which means Artnet cannot come out of here and nothing else can come out of here. So you want to make sure that this is on a 10 dot whatever IP or a 2 dot whatever IP. Um, I know the console defaults to 2. I tend to see it most often as a 10. Um, so just it, it just kind of depends on whatever guest LD is going to be setting out. Um, I usually set it to 10. That's what I see most often. So you make sure EtherCon 2 is set correctly or again, if you're using on PC that your main IP is set uh, within that subnet and then we're going to go into network protocols so let me reset from all the the silliness that I've already gone through um, so let's just start clean so we're going to add I must have double clicked that we're going to add an artnet line we're going to make sure that it is set for input and notice that we can't set the destination IP obviously we're not sending but we can't tell it what IP to be listening from. Um, that is entirely on the end of the sending console. Now, uh, I have run into issues in the past of uh, specifically a hog uh, trying to broadcast broadcast Artnet um, and my console wasn't seeing it and we had to set, set it up so that his console was doing a uh, unicast output instead of a broadcast output uh, sending to my IP specifically. So just as an example we would do an output unicast to 10.0.0.87 in this case um, and make sure the rest of the settings are correct. Um, so if you run into issues with uh, receiving broadcast from somebody, uh, just be sure to check that out. That might be your issue. So anyways, right now we're just setting up our input. So input, we can't set this. That's on the other guy. Uh, local start, this is going to be our starting universe to be listening to. So in my case right now, I've got four universes of rig. Uh, and it's starting at universe 1, which means that I want to make sure my local start is universe 1. That's going to be the first um, the first universe of mine that the Artnet universe is going to translate to. If my rig was starting on universe 11 instead, that means that Artnet universe 0 is going to translate to universe 11. Artnet universe 1 is going to translate to universe 12, and so on and so forth. Um, in this case, we're starting at 1, which I think will be most often the case especially for a festival so we're going to keep that at one amount i've only got four universes so i'm going to drop this to four because i don't i don't know if that actually impacts network traffic but there's no need for the excess uh network all this is just specifying which artnet universe we're listening to uh generally i don't think you're going to end up needing to go above subnet zero um the basics are universe zero is the bottom possible universe in Artnet. Um, sometimes people will prefer to have universe one match up so the numbers make sense. Um, just make sure that whatever they're starting their universe on, if they're starting with Artnet universe one instead of zero, that you're on Artnet universe one. 
um, but the bottom is zero, so I'm going to keep it a zero. So that is our list of settings for the input line. And the very last thing is we want to make sure that uh, ArtNet input is indeed active. So with all that set, uh, we can leave out of there. Uh, and we're going to make sure that our universes are set to listen correctly. Now I've already gone through and set them up to be listening, uh, to be merging in. Um, your, your universes can be in one of three states for DMX and merge off, where they're not going to listen to input at all, and they're only going to do what the console's telling them to. Highest takes precedence and lowest takes precedence. Both pretty self-explanatory. Highest takes precedence, if your dimmer value is 50 and what you're getting for input is 75, console's going to output 75. If what you're trying to output is 50 and you're getting an input of 25, it's going to output 50 because that's the highest value. Lowest takes precedence, opposite concept. <clears throat> opposite concept. Um, so we're going to set it to highest takes precedence for our purposes, uh, and the rest of these settings shouldn't be shouldn't change anything. Um, as far as this view, by the way, if this is confusing anybody, uh, it's just the universe pool. Like if I clear out this window completely, it's just going to pools, universes. But I've got it set up in sheet style because it's easier for me to work with. Uh, if you are in the pool style, you can just right click or edit click. And the very top line that you'll get in any of these is the same set of settings. So I could change this to be DMX off from that window instead. So uh, that takes care of all of our settings getting ready to do our uh, DMX merge, our ArtNet merge. The last thing we want to do is make sure that all of their values are always going to be higher than all of our values, which means setting all of our values to zero. So obviously this is not all zero. So what we're going to do, ah, fuck you, is the super complex command. So if you double, uh, double tap channel, you get the DMX keyword. And I'm going to grab everything in universes 1 through 4, so DMX 1.1 1 .1 through 4.512 at 0. Bam. Now, all your DMX values are 0. Nothing can be lower than what you got there. So any value you get sent in while you're in highest takes precedence mode will now take over the rig. So that's the basic way of setting it up. Now, a friend of mine, Chris Knoll, came up with the idea of, uh, s instead of doing it this way, instead of using uh, manual DMX values, creating a queue that sets all of your fixtures DMX values to zero. Which, if you're going through encoder by encoder, can take a while because not everything moves in the direction you expect it to. Zooms are often inverted, pans are inverted, um, weird things that have default values that are just above, just below zero, whatever. Like not below zero, just below max. Um, so, uh, let's clear this out. Do, do, do. So we're going to release all. All right. Um, super, super fast way to do this. So I'm even going to make sure that there's no ArtNet input so that we don't have any DMX in. Clear out. You don't have to clear out. It doesn't matter. And I'm also going to make sure that we're in world one. Uh, that wasn't what I wanted. Okay. DMX sheet. If I go and I hold store, we get our uh, store options window. I'm going to grab all, grab the entire rig, and I'm going to make our source DMX in. Wait, but we don't have any DMX in. Yeah. Um, so you store there, and bam. <clears throat> Since there was nothing coming in, everything registered as a zero, which means all of our values are now set to zero. Now, the advantage of doing this, which I should have explained... <coughs> sorry which I should have explained before that, is that uh, let's say you need to maintain a little bit of control of your rig. You have a fixture that starts acting wonky, needs to be reset. Guest LD is already doing his thing. He doesn't have time to be paying attention to whatever is going on uh, with one fixture out in the fourth truss. So you can reset the fixture for them, make their life a little bit easier. Uh, this allows you to keep just that little bit of control of the rig because now, since this is a queue, you can still put something into the programmer and have a value that's above zero, which means that you both now have control of the rig. You're not stuck with that hard uh, DMX punched value. Um, I think there are other cases, but I mean, that, that's kind of the primary thing, needing to reset, lamp on, lamp off a fixture. So, 
um, if you need to keep control of, uh, let's say there's also banner lights. Uh, guest LD doesn't want any control of them. You want to keep those. Uh, before you do that, you can grab the f whatever fixtures you want. Do the use the uh, world of selection macro if you uh, don't know where that is. It's one of the predefined ones. You can import it. Um, so let's say I wanted to grab everything just for an example uh, from universes one to three. So I could do. Let's go to a view where you can see my command line. Uh, if you double tap select, you get select fixtures. Uh, DMX. 1.1 through, let's do partway into universe 4 just for shits and giggles. 4.30. So now we can see this yellow outline showing that all those fixtures have been selected. And I'm going to go use the world of selection macro. <coughs> Clear all. I'm going to store. Same thing. Uh, all selection. DMX in is our source. And go here. Clear. I know I'm not labeling these. So now we can see universe 1 two, three, and part of four have all been set to zero with this queue, um, but that everything that wasn't selected is still fully within our control. So that if there are certain things that you need to keep full control of, just make sure they're excluded from the world when you create your queue, and you can keep control of them. And that, that's a little more handy for specifically situations where you need to keep a couple of fixtures in your control. So you could do, let's say, select fixture one through and then do minus whatever fixtures you need to keep control of store that as your world create your queue and now when you give them control of the rig you still have control of the fixtures that you need to keep control of the last thing that i want to go into is um it's been i haven't personally run into the situation but i've been made aware that in broadcast situations uh you might want to be merging in lowest takes precedence mode um so that somebody else can have a group master so, uh, to keep make sure that your fixtures are staying within a certain brightness for the camera. For that situation, this isn't going to work because this is all zeros. For lowest takes precedence, you would need to have all of your fixtures being all your parameters, sorry, being maxed out so that whatever's merging in is um, lower than what you've got. So to do that, we're going to need a couple extra steps. Ah, oh, sorry, my throat's all dried out today. Uh, da, da, da. So we're going to go into network protocols again. And we're going to send ourselves uh, Artnet. So I'm going to use broadcast here. Um, I feel like on a physical console, I ended up unicasting to myself. But, excuse me. <coughs> I feel like on a physical console, I ended up un unicasting to myself. Um, on, on PC, I have not had luck with that, so I am doing output broadcast. If you run into issues trying one, just swap over, try the other. Um, local start, I'm going to be sending from a different universe than I'm receiving from. Uh, we're going to make sure the rest of these settings match. Not 40, 4. Um, no, I don't know when that got turned off. Um, yeah, that was supposed to be on the whole time. I'm pretty sure I said that. Um, anyways. So you want to make sure that you're, so I'm starting from universe 101, and what I'm trying to do is output from universe 101, send it to Artnet, Artnet universe 0, and then have Artnet universe 0 input back at universe 1 for the console. So basically I'm just creating a little loop that sends one universe to another. So again, we want to make sure that our amount is the same, that our start, that we're outputting from a different universe than we're inputting to, uh, and that we have Artnet output and input active. Now, we can go and do the same thing we did earlier with the manual values, which is going to be DMX, in this case 101.1, through 104.512 at 100. And we can see, since we're in highest takes precedence merge right now, that that is already showing up in universes 1 through 4. And if we scroll all, uh, you can see <coughs> slots where there are no active um, fixture parameters. Um, it is showing, showing it passing through, <coughs> but in black because it's not actually affecting any um, fixture that we have. So I'm going to go down to universe 100. 
and we can see here that there's our manual values. So we can already see it's merging in there. I'm going to hold down store again. Actually, let's make sure that we're back in. No, we're going to go back to world one. We're going to store all DMX in here. Clear out. And we're going to release all of those DMX values. And now if I bring up this queue, we can see that everything is brought up to 100. Um, the final step of this being that we <clears throat> go into our universe merge and set it to lowest takes precedence. So now if we actually have a little macro set up just to show this. Now if we're sending uh, a range of values coming in, if I try to force it up here, we can see that um, first off, since we're listening to DMX in, that since everything below this range is already at zero, that most of these values are showing at zero versus if I go back here and set it back to highest takes precedence, or actually if I turn it off, um, that our Q value is indeed setting everything to 100. So it's going back, changing this back to lowest takes precedence. We can see now that this flash between 45 and 80 is indeed translating uh, over here. So yeah, that's it. That's the the basic rundown of how to do an ArtNet merge from setting your DMX values manually to um, creating a queue using empty DMX input to creating uh, a queue sending yourself ArtNet to set your values to a specific value that isn't zero. Um, so I hope you guys have found this helpful. Uh, for more tutorials, for plugins, for other MA related stuff, you can find it on my website or on this channel. The website's geoffadesigns.com. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, Geoffa Designs. Um, questions, comments, suggestions, you can contact me on the website. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you guys for watching and hope it helped.